Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that question the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism via the prison of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget they lose, some of them sleep, they're going to ask how much you are on. I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Usasu Ibnadja and I am the People's Journalist. Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of The Osasu Show. As the legislative elections are fast approaching, we want to remind you about how the 8th Senate came about. Don't forget in 2015, the President and members of the APC went to the International Conference Center to form a consensus on who would become Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives alike. That didn't work out too well. The Osasu Show was at the ICC, then went to the National Assembly to get all the coverage of the drama and the chaos for you. Let's take a flashback of how all that transpired. So I want to ask, did you, were you able to come to any conclusion during the meeting? Yes, we have concluded. That's what? We are going for Femi and Mongonu. But they've already voted Taraki on the floor. Right now is 10.43. Can you tell? We are not aware. You are not aware, okay. Yes. They, so what are you going to do right now since you are going for uh, We are allowance? members and we have to be elected. We have to have the right to elect. But you weren't on ground at the time of the calling, so they are claiming that they had to go ahead with the elections without um, your no, presence. This one is not going to happen in Nigeria. Everybody is democracy must be given the right. Thank you, sir. But the president was meant to be here. He didn't show up. What happened? Actually, I cannot say. The president didn't even show up. How come? Yes, you see, but before we came here, we didn't know that uh, he would not show up. Ah, uh, was there any no, excuse like that he wasn't going to show up? No, I think he was going to show up. Okay. Uh, he was only waiting for us to gather okay. at that time. So, okay. so and we only informed him that we have already gathered here waiting for him. Okay. We had the news that uh, the Senate had already started accreditation of the Yes. Oh. That's why we as House members want to rush before they move to the House. And before they the move house. to the House. And and yeah, and our candidates do you think, do you think your candidates will win? Yes. But, yeah, we will win by but PDP, the next few hours. PDP has claimed they're going to support Joga Dogara. Some, some, some PDP, not all, not all of them. We are here live on the floor of the House of the Representatives. Right now, the voting process is going on. We are watching as each honorable member places their vote for who is going to be the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Is it going to be Honorable Femi or is it going to be Honorable Dogara? So right now, all eyes are on the ballot papers. We're trying to see what every, everybody is clinching onto their seats and trying to see who would emerge, emerge the next Speaker. So stay tuned as we watch the floor and we'll keep you updated on the Osasu show. Sir, I believe there is a little tension in this room right now. People are not quite sure where the speakership is going to swing. So what are your thoughts on what's going on right now and who do you think is going to emerge to speak by? <laughs> well, I, I think that's the beauty of democracy, that there is that tension shows you how, how close it is to call 
you know. And um, it also shows that the House, the Earth Assembly, is going to be very, very thick. The leadership is going to be very, very thick. At the end of the day, having passed through this fierce furnace, uh, whoever emerges uh, must have passed through the eye of a needle. And so we expect uh, a very efficient leadership, good leadership, uh, leadership with capabilities. And so I am very sure, I might not know, I am not God and I cannot predict, but certainly whoever will emerge at the end of the day, uh, I believe must have passed through that storm. I, as an experienced member of the House, uh, I don't think shadow elections produce the leadership of the House. We have uh, gone through this in the past and it has never proven to be a good anodyne to, to bring about the leadership of the House. Uh, so whatever APC did from behind the scene was solely APCs and they had, they had the privilege, the right to even do so. But what we are going, our expression today is just going to be what we legislators who are given to represent the good people of Nigeria feel is good for the people of Nigeria. So when you congregate the, the majority view, you know, on our choice of leadership, that simply would reflect the wishes and aspiration of the Nigerian people. There were a lot of big wigs who were opposed to what's going on in the floor right now, who were opposed to setting people emerging in setting positions, we could say. Um, in the Senate, they've defeated, you know, those big wigs. What do you have to say about that and the, you know, kind of growth in Nigerian politics that has... Uh, well, I, I would say that what happens in the Senate, because we have the National Assembly comprises of the Senate and the House of Representatives, uh, what it's a, it's a very contagious relationship. What happens in the Senate is most likely to happen in the House of Representatives. What do you think about the conspiracy theory going around now that the president called, you know, the senators elect and the Honorables elect to um, the ICC, International Conference Center, this morning, and obviously the Senate elections took place without those um, senator elects on ground. So the same situation was going to happen until Senator Femi um, rushed to um, the House of Representatives this morning. So what do you have to say about that? Well, there is nothing like cons conspiracy. Anything in politics or democracy is about uh, give and take, it's about understanding, it's about cooperation, it's about le le um, uh, uh, level-headed ground. So I think what the party is trying to do is to ensure that at least, even after the elections, there is no aggrieved parties. That is just it. But definitely sure that as far as APC is concerned, it came with the zeal of the acronym, popular acronym of change, that every entity within the National Assembly has a constitutional right to aspire for a position as stipulated in the constitution as well as the house rules. So I think th there is nothing hanky-panky whatsoever about what is happening. First of all, let me just say the two contestants today are qualified. Honorable Dogora, Honorable Bajabi Amila, but definitely one is better. And I think Bajabi Amila is better. And that is why I am supporting Femi Bajabi Amila to become the speaker of the Hate Assembly. And secondly, um, it is normal what is going on today. It is normal in any democratic setup. And that is why we call it House of Reps. We are different opinions. We are not from the same state. We have 37, 36 states plus Abuja. And that is why you can see divergent opinions. So it is normal. But I want to assure you after the whole thing, everything will come back to normal. Uh, for everything we anticipated, somebody would match. It was either Senator Ahmed Lawal or Bukola Sarekia. And Bukola Sarekia has a match, so wish him well. Wish that everybody will be carried along so that we, he will be a good uh, team player and a leader. Do you believe there was a conspiracy behind the meeting that was happening at the International Conference Centre and the emergence of... I have no idea. I just came drove from the hotel and came here. I'm not aware of any meeting, so I can't hold brief. Okay, so you're not aware of the meeting called by President General Mohamed Buhari? I'm not aware. Okay, sir. So how do you see the Senate six months from now? Do you believe there will be any trouble? Um, I don't I, know. I'm not a prophet. All I can do is the one day at a, day, a time. One day, we have a joint till tomorrow. Let's get to tomorrow. Tomorrow will determine next tomorrow. And I think that is just it. We wish everybody well. Do you believe he'll be able to effect the change that we really need in this country in at the president moment? president that is in the pilot. The other arms are just supportive. They play virus law to complement the role of the president. Yeah.
Well, first and foremost, you know, the beauty of democracy is that every person has a right, you know, to his decision. And um, we were asked to come in here today. And uh, of course, those of us on the platform of the PDP, uh, about 49 number, got in here. And then, of course, some other members of the APC, those in support, were supporting the candidature of um, Senator, I mean, uh, Bukola Saraki. They came in too. And of course, we got in there. Uh, I think maybe they decided not to come. And of course, this, the role was taken. And of course, the business of the day, you know, that was sl uh, slated had to go on. Of course, after that, you know, the next three things, you know, the next acknowledgement, we went into into voting. The quorum was formed, you know. I mean, we had over 84 when, of course, they needed the 67. So the quorum was formed. Everything that was done today was legitimate. The Osasu Show had the privilege of interviewing some senator-elects that were in the International Conference Center from the All Progressive Congress, and they said that they would not accept these elections because they were not seated. What do you have to say, say about that? Of course, maybe, you know, at times there's a display of ignorance. You know, if um, a legislative house like the Senate has taken a decision, I have all, of course, within the, the confines, you know, the provision of the Constitution and the standing rules of the Senate. Of course, there is nothing that is illegal about it. What has been done has been done. If we are not present, we are not present. They didn't have any right, you know, to, to their decision to abstain from coming. Everything cannot be done. There is, there, is, there is a smaller number. Of course, we are in the larger number. And we have formed the quorum. Those that are not here, probably not up to about 30 people. So 30, uh, we are 109 in the Senate, and of course if you had 80, 87, we're just about uh, 22 short. So 22 persons cannot decide what we want to do. Of course, if we really have to go to any law court, of course the law court too has to see the merit of their case. We, we, want, to, we, we want to stand to, you know, to see how that, that will play out. You but know? typically the precedent is meant to be on ground as well before we commence the, um, the swearing-in process. What do you have to say? No, 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 the law. Does it say that a letter was, you know, was transmitted to the Senate, and that was read on the floor of the Senate, you know, by the clerk of the National Assembly? He read that letter, and that was what he needed to see. I mean, what he needed to do. Of course, looking at our own standing standing rules, it was just clear that everything was done in conformity with the provisions of the standing rule of the Senate. So I'm guessing the PDP is also happy about um, Senator Ekwere Madu as the deputy. Yes, you see, we are happy about it. It's not just because Kodimadu is, you know, is from the PDP or is of the PDP. We are happy because what has happened, you know, is actually good to stabilize our democracy. We have made our choices. I mean, you remember some days ago, we were guessing that we were going to intervene, you know, I mean, in an uh, uncommon, you know, fashion, you know, bringing our own candidate to come and contest for a position of senior president. We said it, you know, of course we know it. It will not be in tandem with acceptable, you know, parliamentary, you know, precedents. Of course we are a minority, we are a minority. APC is a majority in the House. Because they brought their candidates as they brought their candidates. And all we needed to do was to look at the one, of course, that would best, you know, fit into the purpose, you know, that we had imagined or we had fashioned that for Nigerians. And when we looked at it, we felt that, yes, this man has better credentials to be able to steer the ship of state, you know, that can deliver, so that the state will be able to deliver to our people. And as we did it, that was just fine, and it's been done. Uh, Senator uh, uh, Bukola Saraki, better credentials than any person. And we made our choice. And the beauty of it all is you are entitled to your preferences or your choices. And we made our choice. And we, on the block of the PDP, we came with the 49 number, we gave it to him. And then, of course, for the position of deputy city president, they came up, you know, we came up with a candidate and they came up with a candidate. And of course, the 49 of us, believing in the quality of persons, of, I mean, the presiding officers that we needed. After we had, you know, the vote for uh, Bukola Saraki, we equally went ahead to vote for our own. And they too saw the merit in it. And they gave us seven I mean, extra numbers, which were added to the, you know, to the 49. And we made 56. And of course, the one that was on the platform of the APC, Senator Ndume, you know, put 20 votes. So everything went on well. So those who believe too that maybe it's the exclusive result to decide, you know, what the procedure ought to be, or what the result ought to be, I mean, they are far from it. No, there was no manipulation in all of this. Um, senator Pokola Saraki is a very popular senator. 
And anyone born without service is a specimen of utility to humanity. And I want to believe that um, we need a Senate president that is not only intellectually mobile, but um, have the capacity and capability to afford delivery. And um, looking critically at um, Senator Bukola Saraki, which is wealth of experience, and um, particularly his role in the seventh Senate, especially when he moved the motion on uh, the first subsidy against all odds at that time. Um, I see him as one who will right the wrongs of um, this country, who will ameliorate and palliate our problems as a nation and um, move us forward. More importantly, um, I see him as um, one of the champions of the fight against corruption that is the bane of our development. And um, we went out on what I call democratic evangelism and we won souls and um, that has produced the result we have. I want to state categorically that it is not true that uh, President Muhammadu Buhari is supporting any um, of the aspirants uh, for the seat of the Senate president because um, the president made his uh, mind known that he's not supporting anyone and is ready to work with anybody but um, name droppers, um, psychophants, um, were busy parading his name and dropping his name here and there and he consistently um, addressed the media to say that he's not supporting anyone. So it is not true that the president have a preference or have a preferred candidate. Um, what happened is popular opinion. Democracy is a game of number and it will continue to be a game of number. The most popular um, um, aspirant won. And um, if you are a senator, you are a sen you're not a senator over your political party. You're not a senator over your constituency. You are a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So um, less of party politics, less of individual interests or egocentric interests, and more of national interests. And I think that is what has prevailed. There is a conspiracy that um, President Muhammad Buhari called the meeting at the um, International Conference Center, which we were at. And we're actually the ones that announced to some senators that Senator Saraki has been sworn in as the new Senate president. So what do you think this conspiracy is all about? And why do you think the party was divided at this point in time? Eventually, I wonder, I am not aware of any meeting called at um, the International Conference Centre and no um, decision can be taken on the Senate President um, except on the floor of the Senate because the rules are clear, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is clear, the rules of the Senate very clear on how, where and procedures um, in electing the Senate President. So if you are meeting anywhere outside the um, floor of the Senate, then automatically it's, um, it's a riddle, it's a joke. Welcome back to the program. We also spoke with the ministers that were inaugurated in 2015 on the Buhari administration. They talked to us on the sidelines about their intentions in executing their portfolio. Let's take a look. The DOS TV network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest updates on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. The Kibe Kachifu was born on the 8th of December 1956. This is Amina Mohammed at South as the Senior Special Assistant to the President on MDG between 2005 and 2007. Attended Sunny Hills Primary School, about three months, high school in Gobi on the Board of the Amici graduated from the University of Hokka, where he became bachelor's and master's degree. Congratulations on the new appointment. You deserve it. So how does it feel? Is this the portfolio you wanted? Why not? To create job for Nigerian youth. You know what it means? I'm challenged. What's the first thing you're going to do as soon as you take your, your seat in your office? To implement our party manifesto as it uh, relates to uh, labor matters. Uh, creating new jobs, it will be pulled with me, and uh, we will bring out ideas on how to create new ones. Do you intend to get youth involved in the creation of jobs for them? There are the people who are running the streets, 
there are the people who need the job. And so we will uh, go into all the gamuts of job creation. Even with construction companies, everybody is all hands on the deck. All ministers, all ministries will be involved. And um, I have no doubt that uh, we will put smiles on the face of the young people. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. Congratulations, Honorable Minister. What are the first steps and first strategies you're going to implement as soon as you take office? Well, allow us to have the first meeting and then we'll know the strategies, but they'll be behind the change agenda. And we'll make sure we have lots of policy coherence so that the results are in people's lives. How do you intend to get youth involved? Well, youth are an integral part of this. Whatever we do, the results must be seen in their lives, whether it is their engagement with the economy or it's the skill sets they acquire. But they have to have, um, they have to be up front and centre, as do the women. As Minister, sir, how do you intend to provide Nigerians with accurate and timely information, as well as representing us in a positive light to the international community? Well, I think I've just spoken about that. You see, the issue of timely information, I, I think it's... Um, uh, made easier because the moment a government is dedicated to transparency then there's no there, there'll be no there's no reason to hold any information you see we have all become ministers at a time when what i call citizen journalism has peaked and we are all going to be observed will be watched will be judged so and i don't think that this is um uh, it's no longer fashionable or practicable to even hold any information I know that about a week ago, we had this line about about ministerial, you know, uh, portfolios. Yeah. And that was simply because people were impatient; they wanted to the truth. Of course, when the when the list was revealed today, you could see how off the mark, you know, many of them were. But the lesson is, you must always give timely information. Um, can you tell me, are you impressed by the portfolio given to you by Mr. President? Am I impressed? Yes. Oh, of course I am impressed. It's about service to country. And wherever we could ensure that we deliver that service to country, uh, that's the job we have. Public service is the highest form of duty. And that's what we have been offered, the opportunity to deliver to Nigerians. There's several Nigerians who are qualified. So being called to serve is a big honor. The unemployment rate right now is skyrocketing. It's outrageous. How do you intend to involve the unemployed in your in your ministry? Well, I have been asked to superintend over the activities of solid minerals. Yes. You know what the president just said about diversifying the Nigerian economy from its focus on oil. Solid minerals is one of those critical areas, sectors, where we can break away from the oil trap. And Nigerians would be offered the opportunity to really play in that field. Can you just quickly tell me what you foresee the difference between the last ministerial set under the GEG administration and that of no, President no, 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 I'm not going to attempt any comparison. All I can say is that President Buhari's team are first class. They are crack human beings. And when you see and go further and look at the deployments, you will know those he has put his trust on in the critical areas he has kept emphasizing to deliver. How willing are you to work with this, the Minister of Solid Mineral in order to um, increase and boost our I can assure you that we are ready to provide the enabling environment for not just the Minister and the Ministry of Solid Minerals. They were ready to provide the enabling environment for all investors to come in and invest. What is solid minerals are in agriculture? These are two areas where we have comparative advantages. That's it for today's program. To stay updated on political news, don't forget to follow us on social media at the Osasu Show, at TOS TV Network, at Osasu Igbenadian, and at the Osasu Show Foundation on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Visit our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. I'll see you same time, same place next week. And until then, take very good care of yourself. God bless you.